Hello everyone and welcome to Total War Through the Ages. Starting things off for this episode, I checked out what I needed for victory conditions. So I have to control there are 20 settlements including Constantinople and also, I can't remember the other one, it's in Egypt. So, kind of, I just wanted to kind of check in on that. Um, I'm still quite a ways away from that. Uh, capturing 20 is actually going to be kind of difficult uh, due to the, like, there's not a lot of provinces really close. So I'm going to have to expand a little bit outwards. Um, but of course, we also do have to go for Constantinople. Either way, we're going to be going into this battle here, taking out the army that is outside of I believe this is Sidon. So this is outside of Sidon. They have an army that is sort of defending it again on the outside. So this is my deployment. Um, I, I did leave a decent amount of in this because I did want to kind of showcase how, how I did this. So I have my infantry up front as usual. I have a bunch of horse archers behind my main infantry line. Uh, with all you know, kind of spread out as you can see there. I put my camels behind my infantry as well. Um, and we're basically going to have our archers kind of on either flank of our infantry so there's three units on either side because we have a lot of horse archers in this battle and we also have horse archers i believe it's three units of horse archers on either far flank so we have i think nine horse archers or 12 horse archers total uh so again and we also have our armored i can't remember if those are armored camels or mamluks uh i don't recall which of which that unit is either way we're going to advance up with our infantry we have our archers out front and we have our heavy infantry in behind with a unit or two i think it's only one unit yeah we have one unit of loaded spearmen now our heavy uh cavalry we only have one unit of our really cool heavy horse archer guys so uh, we're not going to be able to rely on a bunch of heavy cavalry, but we have a ton of horse archers. And the enemy army is made up of, honestly, it's, they actually have a lot of artillery in this, uh, in this army, which is interesting. And so I did kind of want to be, a, I wanted to be fairly aggressive here um, because I wanted to be able to, I, I didn't want the artillery to have a lot of opportunities to pick, to pick off my guys, but at the same time, I, I also need, I, I didn't want to rush into it because I needed to be careful to a certain extent. So we have our camel riders uh, swooping out to the left flank as our kind of core of six units of horse archers are just kind of basically going to be supporting our infantry in the main line. Uh, pa I pause it there real quick because we need to be able to order all of our units in. At this point, we're basically just going to charge all of our, almost all of our infantry units into that cavalry unit that got the charge off. I should have been paying a better attention to our center or and that wouldn't have happened. I could have uh, avoided that or at least had some cavalry units to kind of counteract him and here we have our armored i'm pretty sure those are armored camels uh either way we're basically going to charge our armored camels in along with our horse archers are going to go ahead and engage into melee uh basically catching out those cow both of those cavalry units right there um pretty effective the armored uh of course all camel units have a bonus against cavalry not really a bonus but it's just cavalry units are uh it, are afraid because uh, the horses are afraid of camels um that's, so that, that's actually pretty pretty effective. I make both of those cavalry units break. Uh, I do take a little bit of casualties there, um, but overall it's not too bad. Um, so as you see, I've got... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and have my camel riders reform, and then the horse archers. We're going to let some of the horse archers ride down the enemy unit, make sure they get uh, they flee all the way off the field. Um, and then we go, But I do actually go ahead and start pulling them back and just kind of uh, reforming them and getting them back into position. Uh, next up, um, again, moving a little bit forward, we're shifted over to the left flank here. Our one unit of horse archers are being chased down by the enemy. Uh, I, believe, I can't remember what that is. That's an enemy cavalry unit. I think it's their heavy cavalry. So either way, uh, we're actually going to have our cavalry units actually charge them. Basically, we're going to have them stop running away and actually charge so the two units we had behind to catch up. Then we have our horse archers charging here, trying to take out the enemy general unit, which is actually an archer. They don't actually have a general, neither do I in this battle. Um, they, that was their uh, enemy archer unit that their general is in, so we were trying to charge them. We actually charged through with the one unit, and I think I believe I circled back and uh, ran around. But that's the aftermath of our cavalry that kind of was being chased by the enemy cavalry, our horse archers were. We had our horse archers turn around, charge them, and then we had the two units of cavalry charge in from behind. We also charged some of our horse archers into the enemy artillery. Did not end well. Enemy artillery actually was able to uh, make our some of our horse archers route, so that is not great. Um, and But yeah, so for the most part, we're mostly just kind of circling at this point. We've taken out most of the enemy's major threats. Uh, we've taken out most of their cavalry. I think they, I believe they have one or two units of cavalry left, but we took out um, over half of their cavalry. So the majority of their cavalry is already gone. And yeah, it looks like they have that one unit of cavalry there. 
I think that is their last unit, though. So, like I said, we took out most of the enemy threats at this point. So, this was really just a mopping up operation. And I went ahead and took my time. This was a very long battle. I, I cut this down a lot, especially uh, from this point onward. I cut out a lot because it was a lot of me maneuvering and just letting my horse archers shoot and wear down enemy units. So, I, I again, I edited most of that out. It's not very exciting. It's basically just me waiting until the enemy units are softened up and I actually have an opportunity to, like, uh, surround them and charge them. But we are focusing primarily there, as you saw, on taking out the enemy cavalry because, again, I want to take out all of their once I take out all their cavalry, I can just sit back and, you know, take my time taking down the rest of the units, uh, their, all their infantry. So we do have our heavy cavalry to get charged there, but we just have them turn around and then horse archers charging from behind and uh, route that unit very easily. Um, as you see, they were actually getting shot at by the enemy archer unit. Um, so they're, of course, naturally going to be the next target. So I prioritize cavalry, then archers. Um... Because, again, cavalry are the most dangerous to our horse archers, or they're the, not most dangerous, but they're the things that can cause the most problems for, for us. Because uh, once we take out all the enemy cavalry, our horse archers have free reign to just, you know, sit back and shoot at enemy infantry, and they can just easily stay out of range. But if there's enemy cavalry, they can potentially try and catch us out with some maneuvering. And then, of course, enemy archers are the next big thing, so we have to do that. Uh, I, no, I was wrong. They actually did have a uh, general in their army. But either way, so their enemy general unit does actually get away there. Um, but... Yeah, well, no, actually, they must have had two armies. Yeah, that's right. They were two armies going into the battle. The enemy had a reinforcing army, so that's actually might have been the general from the reinforcing army. Uh, yeah, there you go. So either way, we did win the battle. We took out almost their entire force. Uh, the enemy general unit, I believe, was the only one that got away. Maybe one other unit might have. Um, so they, so we're actually going to be able to just besiege Sidon and take it next turn relatively easily. Now, it is worth noting our our army there is actually very beaten up. We still have most of the units did survive the battle. Though, well, not most of them. We lost a uh, little under half, probably like one. We probably lost a th one third of our guys um, uh, in terms of the units that we don't have. But the rest of the guys are very low uh, manpower in each unit. So we are, do have a lot of retraining to do once we capture Sidon. Which, uh, again, I'm fairly confident even with the small force we were going to be able to capture Sidon. Uh, and I was also, I did check, I don't believe if it's, I already showed it or if, I, if it pops up later. But I did actually check how close or what the movement range on the enemy armies that were to the east of Sidon were. Yeah, these, those two armies right there, the big stack of units. I wanted to check to make sure that they didn't, weren't in range. Oh, yeah, there we go. I just highlight over and neither of them are in range. So next turn I'll be able to capture Sidon and I'll be able to just, you know, fight defensively there against those large armies. Meanwhile, next turn, we have uh, one of our uh, heirs come, or not heirs, but one of the family members comes of age, so we're going to have move him Mighty down south. Uh, can I, I actually did pull that general back because he actually has a better management skill than he does anything else, so I'm actually going to leave him in the capital, uh, at least for the time being. Doing more scouting, of course, with our spies and diplomats. Um, that's kind of the main use I've, I have for the agents at this point. I don't really, in, I haven't really invested in assassins at all because I don't know. I don't find that assassins are particularly good in Rome Total War. I, d I didn't ever find that. So again, focusing on spies just because uh, I don't need assassins. So I'd rather just have this. You know, the spies are just just as effective for just scouting the campaign map. Now, this was the first. Uh, Sidon was the first place where I did not destroy the enemy. Uh, religious building, so in this case it would be the church. I did not destroy the, burn the church down and start building a temple uh, right off the bat. I actually was, that was kind of the first time I, I, I don't even think I did it consciously. I actually think I just forgot to do it. Um, but that's actually a good thing because that increase, it, even though it spreads the rival religion, it also, it still, all of the public order bonuses still apply. Um, so even though like you might have some unrest from the religion, from the religious differences, you will actually still be able able to drop on the benefits of just the flat um i think it's like 10 percent public order bonus for like most of the buildings so that actually is able for sidon to actually get to where they're not where they're actually happy like they're, they're kind of neutral um they're like the lowest level of happiness they're not sad so that kind of works they're not going to be rioting or anything like that which is of course always a positive so again later on in the campaign i start doing that all the time where i wait for a city to stabilize and then i destroy the build the religious buildings and uh convert them over to uh, Zoroasterism, which I don't believe I said that right. Either way, as you see here, a lot of scouting going on. Uh, I really, really like having the agents to be able to scout. That's one thing I think I've mentioned this before, but again, just to reiterate it here, have, being able to know where the enemy armies are is so valuable, specifically uh, for the way I'm playing this campaign where, uh, you know, we're using a lot of cavalry units, uh, quite a few armies that are made up entirely of cavalry, as you will see a little bit later on in this episode. 
So again, it's just really valuable to have uh, the in that information there and allows us to outmaneuver a lot of the large enemy forces that we can't that we probably couldn't take in a head and head on head-to-head uh, -head battle uh, we might be able to win the battle but are we would take so many casualties that our you know we our army would be would basically have to fall back and re uh, basically get retrained and by that time the enemy will also probably have another large army in the field anyway so it's kind of not it's, it's a loot it's a it's a slow progressing strategy, I should say. It might not be a losing strategy, but it is very slow to progress. So this way, we're actually trying to be do a lot more uh, guerrilla attacks, uh, attack them on as many fronts as possible, and basically outmaneuver their larger armies. Our one unit of heavy cavalry does get caught out there. That was a bad call on my part to move them forward. Um, uh, yeah, and there are force melts away, but either way, we are able to, it's, it's a minor, just losing one unit, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. And here we have an army in the north that's starting to reform, and we're going to be sending them to the west again to try and capture one of those northern provinces in Antolia. And uh, otherwise, we're also going to have our that new general there. We're going to have him start forming up a new army, a brand new army at our capital. We're going to kind of start working on that. So that'll be quite a ways down the road till we see that army in action or see that army where it's close to being ready. But either way, that is what the plan is long term. Um, so we also just, again, keeping an eye on how, where the armies are in the north. Uh, they don't have any large armies there. So uh, by the time I actually have this army built up to how I want them, I'm, we're going to do it. We're gonna, we still have quite a, a few more units to add to this army before we send them out. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, the they do send... Well, well, yeah, actually, no, I was wrong. I, I was... That, that's, that's as good as we're going to get with that army. Because, again, I, the goal is not to have large armies in the field. The goal is primarily to have small to medium sized armies that are attacking where the enemy is weakest and as I did with the settlement to the south of Jerusalem, I don't remember the name and I couldn't pronounce it even if I did uh, yeah that one right there to the east of our spy that settlement, I captured it but then I just abandoned it because I didn't really care to do it I just needed to you know, weaken the enemy as much as possible we're also going to just harass the enemy there with our cavalry force and this cavalry force is actually also going to go ahead and attack the army outside of Jerusalem. So we were we considered actually sending um, some infantry in here, but I decided, you know what, we won't worry about capturing Jerusalem yet. We'll just attack with our cavalry force. And they have uh, some heavy infantry, so that's a little bit uh, problematic. And they have a general and an archer unit reinforcing. And we only have one unit of heavy cavalry, and the rest are horse archers. So this is the first battle where I basically only... Oh, I guess there was a couple battles where I had basically... Oh, almost only or what well, i guess the mostly horse archers i believe would be the proper way of saying that but um either way uh this is like at this point moving on uh, moving forward in the campaign i start to really utilize horse archers a lot more and i focus on just training up a lot of horse archers um even though they're they're relatively weak in terms of melee ability they're just really powerful just because they can enemy outmaneuver out enemies and just shoot and wear them down so it's just guerrilla tactics wear the enemy down we don't engage directly that's uh, pretty much that now the reinforcing army is coming back uh, behind us and to the left so i initially was going to have half of my horse archers go for the other unit and half of them go for these guys but i just I, I ended up pulling the entire force back and we actually just take up the entire unit or take out the entire reinforcing army which is also the garrison for jerusalem which of course will be interesting most of you have probably already guessed what's going to happen there even though it was not part of my plan but hey you know never uh, never, uh, I can't remember. There's a really good quote by Napoleon Bonaparte talking about basically never. Uh, I think it's something along the lines of never uh, stop you know, or never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. Either way, we continue on to uh, as you see, fast forwarding there because we just got to get in position. So I position my guys to where I actually send like a bunch, like most of my units, kind of behind the enemy because uh, the goal here is just to wear them down. And once they actually get worn down, they, we'll, we'll do a couple charges, break them, and then I want to be able to, cap, to wipe them out entirely. I don't want this army to survive. I, no survivors. Uh, we wanted to completely wipe them out. So. With that in mind, we position a bunch, quite a few of our cavalry behind them so that we can guarantee that we are able to chase them down. Because they are really close to the edge of the map, so even if we, even though our cavalry could catch them, some of them might be able to escape. But, as we see there, we're just having all of our horse archers focus on the enemy, on one enemy unit, just focusing on wearing them down. And that's more or less kind of what I try, is I try to focus fire on a single unit, get them worn down, and then switch targets to another unit. Um, obviously, a lot of times it's also... Um, better to actually you know, also a lot of times I end up splitting the fire like I am now um, 
and that really just comes kind of comes down to circumstances and they're trying to retreat off the field so they're not routing yet but they are trying to retreat and it was at this point where it's like yeah okay now we're gonna charge in because they're already trying to run off the map so they should break relatively easily and in fact they do and we are able to as i as my intention was no survivors we wipe them out entirely now again uh, i was an idiot and i didn't turn off, fire at will off so i actually inflict quite a few casualties on my own guys from all my horse archers being fire at will shooting into the combat with friendly units so uh, that is something that i do catch later on in this campaign but it's quite a while down the road i think before i start to notice how how, how much damage i'm doing so jerusalem's garrison got entirely wiped out so hey we're gonna just go ahead and uh, hop on into the and, and capture jerusalem uh, and we do of course exterminate the populace which gives us a lot of money to work with and i am also an idiot here and i actually do destroy the uh public order buildings the uh, the churches specifically uh which again was a mistake it would have been way better if i actually had just done like i did with sidon and just left them be but i did actually end up destroying them either way uh that's all the time we have for this episode and as you see that well before we do the outro as you see rioting bad stuff happening now i actually left this in here right at the end of the episode just because i kind of wanted to showcase uh, how much building and this is actually like the second or third turn in the row after i cat no this is the second turn after i captured jerusalem where i was able to build a lot of buildings in all of my cities just because of the money we got from uh capturing both sidon sidon and jerusalem and exterminating the populace so uh, doing that really good source of income either way that's all the time we have for this episode thank you all for watching be sure to check back for more and as always till next time